we're going to do a worked example. So this is where I'm going to start asking for some help from you lot. So to do this, I'm going to build myself a Homer Simpson donut making machine. This machine doesn't literally exist, I'm sure. It's just a machine I'm making up for this example. So here's my donut making machine. I'm going to put dough and water um, into an extruder, into a head box. And I'm going to extrude donuts onto a conveyor belt. The belt is going to pick up them donuts and take them through an oven to cook them. Then I'm going to go past a scanner where I'm going to measure what's called basis weight. Basis weight is the weight of it. I'm going to measure the moisture and I'm going to measure the colour. In addition to this, I have a consistency meter on the dough. Consistency is the, ooh, the stickiness of the thing. It's not density exactly, it's stickiness. That's the best I can describe it. So let's have a look at some of these, this donut making machine. Here's the piping and the, well, the piping for this donut making machine. Over here I have dough. Now dough consists of flour, eggs, uh, water, and, oh, goodness knows what else, all salt and all the good stuff that goes into making dough. Dough is being made at the uh, stock preparation plant, which is across the road. And that's where they're mixing all this stuff up in batches. So I have dough coming down here. Remember, it consists of flour, water, and eggs. I also have a water line here. Now, this is what's called makeup water. This water is additional water, which I'm going to add in order to maintain the correct moisture level in my donuts. They're going into this head box. A head box is a machine that measures, well, sorry, a machine where a pressure is maintained, a head. So they're going into this head box, which has got an extruder screw in it. And this screw will screw the dough out and plop them out onto the conveyor belt. They're going to go down the conveyor belt. Then they're going to get to the oven. I'm warming the oven using steam. I have a steam pipe going into a valve and that's going to warm up this oven. After they've been cooked in the oven, they're going to go down the conveyor belt. And at this point here, I'm going to measure the basis weight, the moisture, and the color. And then they're going to drop off the conveyor belt into boxes and be sent off to the shops. Everybody OK so far? Alrighty righty-o then. Here's the instrumentation I've added onto my P&ID drawing. It's now P&ID. So here's my instrumentation. Uh, I don't have pucker letters to use for things like consistency and basis weight and moisture and color. So in the true spirit of instrument people everywhere, I just make them up and use what's convenient. So I'm going to use BW for basis weight, and MOI for moisture, and CUL for color. Um, that's because they are the letters that we use. So there's my instrumentation dotted around the thing. First things first, flow meters. This is where I need you now to get typing. What type of flow meters are available to me?
So I've got mag flow, magnetic flow, turbine, paddles and propellers, positive displacement, semi-rotating pistons, they are, that, and um, mutating discs. The sort of thing you get on your water flow meter at home. Vortex, which is works just like the flag flapping, vortices breaking off from a bluff body. Any others? Okay, well we have a whole variety of oh, Venturi. Venturi uses Bernoulli effect. The I'll just draw that so everybody knows what it looks like. We get a vacuum in the middle of that. Do you know that is a terrible drawing? Anyway, um, we have a whole bunch of differential pressure type flow meters. We've got the orifice plate. Uh, we've got pitot. I hear a pitot tube sensor was implicated in the crash of the Air France airplane. Uh, uh, what else have we got? We've got Anu Bar. Um, yeah, that'll probably do us for now. Okay, so these are the flow meters that we know and we've seen. Now, when it comes to choosing flow meters, this is the sort of decision process I usually go through. I say to myself, firstly, okay, if it's going to be a liquid, if it's conductive, then I'm going to use a mag flow. Mag flow is always my first choice. Mag flow is the first meter I always want to use. It's very, very accurate. It's very reasonably priced. And it, well, it just works. So if at all possible, I'm going to go for the mag flow. If it's not conductive, then do I need tremendous accuracy? In fact, if I need even more accuracy than Magflow, I'm still going to go to Coriolis. If I need very, very good accuracy, I'm going to go to Coriolis. Coriolis is absolutely accurate. Um, and if I don't need great accuracy and it's non-conductive, then I'm going to go look at one of the others. I have a turbine, ultrasonic, orifice, or calorific. This is my basic decision-making process with liquids. Now, sometimes this gets short-circuited, and it depends on the process. Process variable. What can short-circuit this decision-making process is what exactly is in the pipes. If there is something very, very nasty in the pipes, then I'm probably going to go ultrasonic. Because the ultrasonic flow sensor is on the outside of the pipes. So I don't have to put my lovely instrument anywhere near the nasties inside the pipe. You always got to consider, whenever you're choosing anything, you've always got to consider what is it in the pipe. If it's something that's fairly benign, like water, then fine, we can go mag flow. Conductive, it's nice. But if it's something nasty, then we might have to go to something else. And nasties, acids, alkalines, salt. Brine is incredibly horrible. Brine is horrible, horrible stuff that will eat flow meters. It will eat the little electrodes on mag flow meters. It will eat the pipes in Coriolis meters. It will eat a turbine hole. The orifice ends up being a very big orifice, like it's in jail or something. Um, so ultrasonic would be great for that, just because it's so nasty. Now, if I have gases, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, how nasty is this gas? Is it a nasty gas? If it's a very nasty gas, I'm going to go with a very solid flow meter. And the Vortex flow meter is built like a tank. 
So if it's a very, very nasty gas, I'm going to go for the vortex flow meter. Vortex flow meter, if you remember, is the one with the bluff body and then the flag. And the vortices breaking off either side. So if it's a nasty substance, I'm going to go with vortex because it's very solid. If it's not so nasty and I need lots of accuracy, I'm going to go with Coriolis again. Coriolis is always my best choice when I need great accuracy. If I'm not that interested in accuracy, I will use one of the others. And in descending order of accuracy, turbine's the most accurate, orifice plate, pitot tube, and calorific. Calorific is really not that accurate, but it's cheap and it's easy to install. Pitot tubes are okay until they get blocked up, like the Air France aeroplane. Orifice, well, that's an old one that's been around for millions of years. Turbine is very accurate, providing we haven't got any elbows nearby and we're using a flow straightener. So with gases, I go through this decision-making process. If I have something, a very corrosive gas, sodium cyanide, if at all possible, I'm going to use, I don't want to get inside that pipe. I do not want to get inside that pipe. I would probably, in that situation, use, um, actually, I didn't put it down. I, I can still use ultrasonic. So I still have, I should put that in here. Ultrasonic. Ultrasonic will work on gases. What ultrasonic needs is something to bounce back off. So if the gas has got any sort of particulate nature, then ultrasonic will work. If I can't use ultrasonic because I'm not getting a good uh, echo off the thing, then I'm going to fall back to using Coriolis because Coriolis is just a bent bit of pipe. So there's no way, uh, you know, providing I can get my Coriolis pipe uh, possibly PTFE coated, then I think I'm going to be okay. But I certainly am not going to use anything which is going to involve getting inside that pipe or taking the crap from inside that pipe out. So I don't want to put the turbine in because I don't want to get in that pipe. Orifice plate, well for that I need um, I need um, impulse pipes out to a DP cell. So that one's not going to work. I'm not going to take gas out of that pipe. Pitot tube, not going to do that again. Calorific may work, although the calorific sensor typically has two small heated stainless steel heated pads on it and the nasties could well eat that away. So I think I'm going to try ultrasonic, and if that's not going to work, Coriolis. If the flow is high enough, we could always try Vortex. The only reason I'm not saying use Vortex straight off is because Vortex flow meters have got a minimum flow below which they just won't measure. So if, if we've got a high enough flow, then vortex would be good, just because vortex is such a solid thing. Does that answer your question? OK. So having said that, here I have a flow meter on my dough. Dough consists of flour, water, eggs, yeast, God knows what else, salt, what sort of flow meter would you choose? Okay, if you could use the decision thingies at the top.
Now, one thing I should say about dough is it's thick and sticky. I don't think if, if you may have made a cake, you'll know dough is thick and sticky. And um, if you put anything in the pipe, it will stick to it. So I'm really going to steer away from anything in the pipe. Donuts, when cooked, may be non-conductive, but uncooked dough, let's assume, is conductive. So I think the consensus we have is for the mag flow, and I would go along with that, because it's conductive liquid, so I'm quite happy with that. I always want to use mag flows. Mag flow is my favorite meter. Now, here we've got water. This is water, it's makeup water. It's not pure water, this is tap water. Tap water has got the same conductivity as river water, not surprisingly, because tap water and river water are the same thing. So here we have tap water, which we're using as makeup water. What should we choose? Well, looks like we've got a pretty even spread on this one. So I'm going to go through and do my reasoning. Turbine flow meter. The reason I don't want to use a turbine flow meter, firstly, is because it's a piece of crap. They go wrong and they're inside the pipe. And when they go wrong, that means I've got to open the pipe up to get at it. So I don't like a turbine flow meter because it's mechanical. Mag flow meter, love a mag flow meter. Coriolis meter, could use Coriolis, but I only use Coriolis when I need to be very accurate, otherwise it's too expensive. Pitot tube, this would work, yes it would work. Um, it's river water, or it's tap water, so eventually it will fur up, fur up, because if the water has got any sort of hardness in it, then that hardness will build up on the pitot tube and block it up. Also, water, tap water, contains um, slime, slime molds. It's the black stuff you see on toys, bath toys that have been left in the bath for too long. It's a black slime mould layer that builds up on the inside of water pipes. That slime mould will build up on the pitot tube and will block it up. Orifice plate. The orifice plate, in order to come out of the orifice plate, so we've got a pipe with an orifice, and then what we do is we come away from that with a couple of impulse pipes to a differential pressure sensor. What's going to go wrong with this is the impulse pipes. They will block up. They will block up with slime mold and they will block up with fur if there's any hardness in the water. So I don't like that one. So let me say, don't like that one, don't like that one, too expensive. I'm going to buy a Magflow. Basically, I'll buy a Magflow unless I can you know, whenever I possibly can. Unless there's a bloody good reason why not to, I will buy a mag flow. Uh, 